First place in the region on the line tonight in Wilkes County. Washington, Wilkes, and Aquinas both 3-0 in region play. So tonight's winner takes the outright lead. The Aquinas D shutting out the Tigers in the first half. Up 10-0 and picking up right where they left off. Ferris Lowry. Look at that play. Tipping it to himself. He gets the pick. Would return it all the way. But it would get called back because of an Irish penalty. Same score now. Still 10-0. Later in the third. Quarterback. John Paul on the keeper. All the way down to inside the one. And the next play, Joseph Douglas would finish it off with the touchdown. 17-0, Fighting Irish. The Aquinas Fighting Irish win 24-8 over Washington Wilkes. Coach Leonard picking up his 50th win as their head coach. This is just the beginning. You are watching Football Friday Night. Football Friday Night is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Your CSRA Chevy dealers, Chevrolet, find new roads. Augusta Technical College, your leader in cybersecurity programs. Great deals on furniture. The deals are here. The deals are now. Jostens Georgia Campus Services, celebrating moments that matter since 1897. Now, the leader in local high school football coverage, WJBF Sports, brings you Football Friday Night. Welcome into Week 10 of Football Friday Night. I'm Nathan Palm along with Zach Hughes. After tonight's games, there are only two weeks left in the regular season for Georgia teams. Yeah, and next week is the final week of the regular season in South Carolina, so this season quickly coming to an end. Yeah, absolutely. But first, we've got a full slate of highlights from Week 10 to show you, and we'll start on the Georgia side of the river tonight with a key region matchup in Columbia County. Pretty much a must win for Greenbrier to keep its postseason hopes alive with an 0-2 record. Meanwhile, 2-0 Evans trying to stand top of the region. Second play from scrimmage, J.Q. Brown hits the hole and he's off to the races. Untouched, 68-yard touchdown. Greenbrier takes a 6-0 lead, but they miss the extra point. Evans' first possession going for it on fourth and three. They've got a pretty good running back themselves. Corey Watkins spinning through a defender, cuts outside, and turns a fourth down into a touchdown. Knights go up 7-6. to six. Still in the first. Greenbrier was driving, but Evans takes over after a fumble. This time it's their electric quarterback, Demikas Taylor. Easily scores there. Knights up 52-20 to 20 in this one. They break the single-season school points record as well in a big win over their rival. Out to the Brickyard, second rank Thompson hosting Cross Creek. First quarter, Mills Ridings connects with Christian Tut, who picks up a nice gain deep into Razorback territory. And then later in the drive, Bubba Murray takes the handoff, and he's in from three yards out. That put the Bulldogs up 7 nothing. Later in the first, now Cross Creek punting. They didn't block anyone. Thompson blocks the punt, takes over deep in Cross Creek territory again, and that would set up a Bubba Murray touchdown once more. So Thompson was up 13-0. Ensuing kickoff, though, Cross Creek special teams unit bounces back in a big way. Terrence McKenzie finds a crease, and he could go all the way, pushed out at the one-yard line. But no problem. Devin Hicks takes it in from a yard out for the score to make it a 13-7 game. Thompson, though, would get the win. Final score 44 to 14. Can't wait for Thompson's game at Burt County next week, which, as always, will likely decide the region champion. The Bears ranked seventh in the state playing Baldwin tonight. Baldwin strikes first. Cordell Cobb makes the catch, gets into the end zone, and it was seven to nothing. So Burt County ball now trying to respond. Wanya Dove. Hits Dallas Rogers for a first down, and then later it's Dove to Rogers again. Another first down for Burke County. The Bears continue to march down the field. This time, Damari Kelly takes the handoff. He gets another first down, just pushed out of the five yard line, and Leon McGee takes the handoff, gets into the end zone. That tied the game. Burke County stays undefeated with a 32 to 14 win. So we know Thompson and Burke County will be in the playoffs, but that third spot still up for grabs. Yeah, it is. Baldwin and Hefseba still in the mix. And ARC trying to make a move on it as well. Important game for the Musketeers as they travel to Hefseba tonight. Third quarter, ARC in command up 17 to nothing. Rebels quarterback Charles Lockwood decides to tuck it and run on this play. Picks up a first down. Still Hefseba's ball here. 
It's Jerron Griffin spinning out of the backfield. And he's going to run with it. Tries to hurdle the defender, but he gets upended there. Hefseba just trying to get back into this game. But it's Isaiah Dorsev of ARC dashing those hopes with the pick. That pretty much ending the homecoming game. 17-0 ARC with a big region win over Hefseba. Right now, Glen Hills holding down the fourth and final spot in its 2A region, looking to at least maintain that position tonight at Westside. Spartans up 22-12 late in the second quarter. Westside answers, putting a nice drive together. Tyree Frazier heaving that one up for Quetage Jackson, the senior coming down with it. The drive continues. Westside gets down to the five-yard line, fourth down with 10 seconds left in the half, and they spike it. A little confusion, so they turn it over on downs. Last play of the half, DeMonte Green just tossing it downfield to see what happens. Antonio Grant makes the catch for the Spartans, but that was the last play of the half. Glenn Hills gets the win, though, 42-20. to Same region, Butler at Laney. Each team 1-3 and three in region play, needing a win to keep their postseason hopes alive. We picked this one up in the second quarter. Chad Welcher takes the handoff. Jesus Thomas pops the ball loose, lays down a big block. Balls are bouncing around. Eventually, Tyrese Mitchell picks it up, takes it to the end zone for a Butler score to tie the game at 14. Third quarter we go now. Anthony Grant lofts one up the sideline, goes over the receiver. Donald Healy there for an interception, and he goes untouched the other way for a pick six. Two-point conversion made it 22-14. Laney Butler comes right back, though, with a response. Grant finds his receiver this time, and in a coward, he pulls it down, gets into the end zone. Bulldogs go for two, get it to tie the game at 22, but it's Laney. Get, getting the win in overtime. Final score, 34-28. to 28. Well, we started the show with Aquinas at Washington Wilkes. Let's head back to that region in Lincolnton. The Red Devils trying to stay in the mix for a region title. They hosted Greene County. Red Devils up 7-0 in the first quarter. Antonio Williams gets the QB quick off the edge for a big-time sack. Throws it up. It's an incomplete pass. Second quarter now. Lincoln County ball. Javon Reed fakes. Keeps, get, gets to the sideline, hurdles a defender. Check out this player oh, here, just steps out of bounds. Very nice. And then a couple plays later, Jam Jamal Norman right up the gut for a five-yard score, 14-0. Red Devils and Lincoln County wins at 44-15. to It'll be interesting to see how that region race unfolds with Lincoln County and Aquinas and Washington Wilkes all in the mix. Yeah, lots of region titles still completely up for grabs, but the title races in South Carolina are even more clear with just one week left in the regular season. Palmetto State highlights up next on FFN. Hey, Supporting high school athletics, McDonald's, proud sponsor of football Friday night. 